Hey, it's Rashida from Rashida's on Loose here today to tell you the three things you need to take with you when you're long-term traveling. So long-term travel means any kind of um, any kind of trip over a month. So career break, sabbatical, adult gap year, junior gap year for all y'all kids out there. Hey y'all. Um, I don't usually give advice to you guys, but this one applies. So the three things you should not leave home without. First, a fee-free bank account. So what do I mean? Um, you can leave with cash for the country you're going to, but chances are if you're going on a long journey, you're going to more than one country, so you're gonna need more than one currency. And carrying it all and hoping that you'll have enough money on you and you'll be able to keep it and you won't get robbed like I did. Um, that's a lot to risk. So I, what I did was I went to Charles Schwab. I'll put a link in the um, description and I opened a fee free checking account. Um, if I remember correctly, the link I'm going to put gives you some bonus if you sign up. It doesn't get me anything if I remember correctly, but it'll get you, I think some extra dollars in the account if you use that link. Um, so with that account, I can go to any ATM around the world and take out money. And if I'm charged fees, Charles Schwab will put that money back into my account. So they reimburse me for any fees I'm charged. And so what I did when I traveled was whenever I got to a country, if I got to an airport or a bus station with an ATM, I would go and take out money. Um, I wouldn't worry about what the fee was because uh, sometimes the fees were kind of ridiculous, but Charles Schwab has my back. Um, but what I would do was I would take out about a hundred US dollars for whatever country I'm in, because I figured that was a good amount to get. I'd probably spend it on transportation. If I had any left over, I could pay it to wherever I was um, lodging, whether I was a hotel, something like that. Um, and that way I'd have enough cash for a few days. And if I needed to go back to an ATM, I wouldn't feel guilty because if I went, if I didn't take out enough money the first time, I could go back and it would still be fee free. So link in the description for that. Um, the other thing you should not go on any trip without, no matter where you're going, no matter long, how long you're going, is travel insurance. Travel insurance is bay. Now, you go online, you buy a flight, and then you see that the airline is like, for $60 more, we can protect you, blah, blah, blah. I don't do that travel insurance. What I do is I buy an annual plan, and I use that annual plan to protect me for every trip I go on in a year. So um, it doesn't cost as much as you think. I think my plan was like $200, and that covered everything. So no matter where I am, no matter what happens, unless I'm at home, and the only time I got hurt <laughs> this year was when I was at home. Um, it covers you, but it, it's one of the things to think about is what it covers you for. And you really need to look at different plans because different plans have different coverages. But the plan I have covers me for any like flight cancellations or hotel disruptions or anything like that. But it also covers me if I get hurt. And more importantly than that to my family, um, it covers me if something really drastic were to happen to me. Say I were to die, um, it's incredibly expensive to fly a body through any country. And so I have a travel insurance policy that would pay if anything happened to me to get my body back home. Now that's probably not something you wanna think about, but if you're going traveling long-term, you don't wanna um, put responsibilities on your family that they might not ordinarily have. And so that's something that I thought about. So I have a policy that covers me no matter where I get hurt, no matter what happens. And it's also a policy that um, they pay first. What I mean is that in some policy, in some, some countries, if you don't pay during your hospital stay, you cannot leave the hospital until you pay. And in some insurance policies, you have to pay out of pocket and then they reimburse you. The policy I have, they pay first, so I don't have to pay anything out of pocket. I've never had to file a claim because I've never gotten hurt on the road, but I know other people who have and have the same policy and have been very well taken care of. Now the okay. third thing you need is a very, very good international data plan and phone plan, or you need an unlocked cell phone and a little bit of patience to get a SIM card everywhere you go. Now, this might seem obvious. You might think, hey girl, everywhere has uh, Wi-Fi. I don't really need I'm not gonna be on my phone that much. 
You'd be surprised where you need to get Wi-Fi. You would be surprised how it comes up. I went to one place, Airbnb in Paris, and in order to get into the Airbnb, I had to stand in the middle of the street, like outside of the building. So I wasn't anywhere that had Wi-Fi, and I had to use an app to un Okay, and at that point, I had T-Mobile. Nope, lies. At that point, I had Verizon, and Verizon charged me $10 a day every time I used any international roaming data. So, so unlocking that door in the street cost me $10 with Verizon. And I was like, I'm tired of this. T-Mobile has free international data and calls, so I'm going to them. They have a plan with that. I switched over to the T-Mobile plan, the global plan, only to find out their global plan is trash. First of all, you, it's international for like short spurts of time because when I was traveling, they kept sending me texts like, hey girl, you haven't been in the US in enough time for us to continue your plan. And it was like a month of being away. They were like, we're gonna cut you off if you don't connect to a US cell phone carrier, a US tower, because I'm using too much international data. Okay, that's one thing. But the bigger problem was that their service really sucked. I remember being in South Africa with a girlfriend of mine and we both had T-Mobile and we are in Johannesburg and we're like, I think it was the holidays and we were looking for stuff to do and we were like, yes, let's party. There's brunches, there's supposed to be stuff to do. But we couldn't find anything because our phones wouldn't work. So we couldn't find like the locations. We couldn't use our maps. We couldn't do anything. And we both had T-Mobile, T-Mobile's international plan. And I've talked to other people for the same issue. I had it in multiple countries until I found out that T-Mobile had a global plan and then they had an upgrade that was 50 bucks more. And the 50 bucks more got you faster service that you could use. So actually their international plan was $50 more than what they say it is because the service you get with their regular plan, you're not, it would take me like 90 seconds to open one web page or more and, or nothing would open and it was just nonsense. So, um, coming from someone who traveled for a year, nonstop, year and a half, year and a half, um, you definitely need a phone with data. Not everywhere is going to have Wi-Fi. Uh, when I moved to Mexico, I unlocked my cell phone. I started using SIM cards because I was tired of getting that message from um, T-Mobile. And the data in Mexico was really, really cheap. So it was easy to do. It was cheap to refill. I can refill it on an app on my phone. Super cool. Easy to deal with. You need a working phone at all times, at all times. And so it's really important to get a data plan that works at all times because your phone is pretty much a brick without it in a lot of places. So that, travel insurance, fee-free checking, do it, you need it. Um, that's it for me today. Hope this helps. Uh, this is Sheeta from Sheeta's on the Loose. Um, more info will be in the description box. I'll put up some links to the things that I used while I was gone. And I'd love it if you could press subscribe.